Yo, what's going on friends? It's Christian and I hope you guys are having an awesome day or evening because I am. I've been super excited to make this video. Um, we're talking about custom LUTs, custom filters, how to get the best and the most out of your DSLR into OBS. All right, let's get right into it. Let's talk camera settings. Um, as an example, we're gonna be using the Sony A6300 and we're gonna run through the menu and, and how to set it up. And it's super simple. The same rules will apply to other cameras. Um, they're gonna have a different name for, for their settings, but it'll be the same thing. Um, but most importantly, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna change your picture profile in your camera to, if it's a Sony, S-Log2. And the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna go to picture profile it's under the video settings. And you're gonna select PP7. Um, the only change you're gonna make within this menu is that you're actually going to change the color space to Gamma Cine 3. Um, that is my preference. Now you can leave it at its default, which is the S gamut. What this log format is supposed to be, whether it's C log, whether it's, you know, what's what the other ones? It's C log, F log tree log you're gonna look at this and you're gonna be like what the f did you do with my camera um this flat and unflattering looking image is actually a very good base for you to really mold and paint a better picture we're gonna add in some color and we're gonna you know manipulate a little bit of this to kind of get the look that we that we can get however we couldn't do that if it already processed you know its own version of the image, if that makes sense. We need a blank canvas, and this is the closest thing to the blank canvas we get besides actually using a blank canvas. So um, the most important thing about setting this up if you're using a Sony though, is that S-Log2, you're supposed to overexpose it two stops. The settings, in your setup settings, you could go ahead and change the gamma assist to auto or to you know whatever s log 2 and then it'll show you a, rep a representation of what your image would look like as if it had you know a, a correction LUT uh, that puts it into a rec 709 mumbo jumbo it just means regular colors that you would see like on a sitcom so um, with that being said your camera should be all good to go um, assuming that you already know what you know frames per second you need this to be in um, you need to just multiply that number times two, and that's what your shutter speed is going to be. Um, it's called the 180 degree rule, but that's for another time. So now that we've gone ahead and set up the camera, go ahead and plug it back into your cam link or whatever device you're using, set it up, and um, open up OBS and let's get to it. Once you've got OBS open, you're going to go ahead and full screen your uh, webcam feed and you're just going to record it. Now go ahead and make a pose or two. Um, this is going to be our sample. You're going to just stop at one of these frames and this is where we're recording from. So after you've gone ahead and done that, go ahead and locate where that file is. Easiest way for me to do it is I just click on file and then show recordings and then it shows the whole folder. Um, now go ahead and open up Resolve and let's get to it. We're gonna switch over to our, uh, you know, other scene where we've got the, the scene. <laughs> let's go. Um, right here, I got Resolve 17. Sorry, this is Photoshop in the background and we are going to need that. Um, go ahead and create a new project. Now I already have one set up. I just wanted to skip the um, project settings like uh, portion of this but pretty much you don't really like just leave it as default that's not gonna matter change the timeline I think it'll give you an option to change the timeline to like match the clip speed um, and that's all you got to do so go ahead and drag your clip in I will be doing the same I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's grab my sample footage right here boom see change the rate doesn't matter we're in the edit tab go ahead and throw it onto the timeline I like to scrub through and find what is called the hero shot yeah thumbs up good job let's go ahead very encouraging why not so uh, the big main focus here is we're just going to fix our skin tones we want those to look good so in the color tab is where we're gonna do it 
I will go in another video where we can go into like a more in-depth uh, discussion on how to color grade and resolve and what to look for and the tools to use but that is not going to be this video. If that's a video you guys would like, please feel free to leave or leave a comment and let me know. It's something that I do want to work on, something that I continue to practice just so I have multiple looks to show you guys. But here we're going to do a very simple one. So first thing I like to do is raise our saturation. Make sure that we're in log wheels. That's by clicking this third one here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just a hundred all the way the saturation on the curves here. I like to go ahead and go to saturation versus, or oh, sorry, luminosity versus saturation. Is it luminosity? I forget. Um, and I go ahead and I create a point in the middle and then create this round curve where it pulls everything in the middle up and it saturates it more while making sure that our shadows and our highlights are staying desaturated or at least it's not changing the saturation of it um, and you're gonna want to do that just because it's just unnatural if you have this black shirt turning you know green or purple or something anyway so um, I do that and I add a little bit of saturation and just so I can at least see what is going on with my image because the next thing we're gonna go do over here is add some anchors and we're gonna mess with the curves now you want to do this in moderation everything in moderation including moderation so go ahead and grab this right here this point here these are gonna be your shadows um, go ahead and pull this down a little bit now there's never just like a you have to pull it at this spot nope just whatever looks good to you use these scopes if you if you need to um, if you don't have an extremely cool monitor I don't so I I use these scopes all the time um, and the way I read it is this is your red, green, and blue channel. Um, and essentially it's just showing you the representative where that is on the screen, but you can also tell uh, where it's at as far as the shadows and the highlights. So we can see these are the balanced, balanced red, green, blues in our shadows. It's nothing to worry about. Waveform here if you wanna take a look at your exposure, which is what we should be doing. Anyway, so gonna go ahead and make these and I want a nice smooth curve because I want the roll off to look good and natural so it's not just pitch black here pitch black here and you'll lose all the detail um, at the same time we want to make sure that we're creating contrast so I like to bump up this part of our highlights curve it off a little bit better and look at that it already looks way sharper and way more colorful and that's because we had all the channels linked up. So all the channels were um, adjusted at the same time. Um, and when doing so, that's when you really want to like take things slow and uh, not, you know, make very precise adjustments. You don't want the image to break down. So uh, before and after <laughs> change before and after. Okay. So, um, I think a lot of people here would say that this is good to go. Uh, and for the most part, yeah, you've essentially corrected um, effectively the exposure and a little bit of the saturation in this image. Um, I just think that it's a little too like yellow is something I don't like about it in there. Doing those shadows there. Um, what I would do tech or what I like to do as far as my skin tones though, it's just a really quick fix now. Um, professional colors might be like, that's it, that's your only fix to it, but hey, it works. This is a really quick um, way to do it. But I just take the yellow, which is where my skin lies, and I think right there. We're good to go on this one. Boom. Um, with that being said, just go ahead and right click on this clip here, and we're gonna generate LUT, 33 point cube, I already have a folder on my desktop where I save all my LUTs too. So I'm just gonna save over this one that is called OBS Test LUT. Very, very efficient here today. We've gone ahead and we've saved our LUT into a cube file. Now at this point, we've already created a LUT. That cube file can be used on any future projects. It could be used in Premiere. You're good to go with it. Now you can't use it in OBS yet. OBS, you need a .png file. For the LUT and in order and so for those of you that are pretty savvy when it comes to this kind of stuff it's like 
that's an image file. Like how is an image file a LUT file? And um, you know, I don't know the magic, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop, download that neutral LUT PNG that I have in the description and open it up here. You're gonna get a bunch of colorful uh, squares. You know, it should be 512 by 512 in image size. And guys, this is a very, very simple step. This is, now a lot of you that already have LUTs, um, you guys have already skipped to this part of the video, didn't watch the beginning part, but guys, this is super easy. How you're gonna convert that .cube file into a PNG is you're gonna go to layer. You're gonna go to new adjustment layer, color lookup. And within color lookup, you're gonna go ahead and click on 3D LUT. grab that cube file and boom you should see that this changed just a little bit if you were to hide it boom i don't know what the science is behind all of this but it works okay so go ahead and export as and whatever folder you can put it right back where it was supposed to be go ahead and obs test lut overwrite it and boom you have your LUT for OBS. Now, it's very simple um, how to add it to your scene. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on your webcam or camera, you know what I mean. Um, pull open your filters, right click add, apply LUT, and then boom. Within that, you just go to browse and then you, you add it in. Now, it's gonna take you to um, this folder, which OBS already has its own like LUTs, but uh, let's be real, they're eh. Plus, it feels a lot better when you made the LUT yourself. <laughs> so um, yeah, you're gonna go ahead and find your LUT folder and boom, go ahead and load it in. Should be there, you have an intensity slider. And that's it guys. You've applied your LUT to, actually I'm gonna remove that before I forget. Uh, you've applied your LUT to OBS. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you guys found it very, very helpful. Um, when I learned how to do all of this and I learned you could put LUTs into OBS, it just, I was super excited. You know, like I'm, I'm telling you once a day, I, I kind of practice and I just like, I keep creating different looks. Um, but it is what it is. So um, please hit that like um, and share this video with anyone that you know that you know this could benefit them and, and hit that sub button if you want to see more of this and please leave a comment with any tutorials on on anything you know film related streaming related uh you know editing related whatever it is if you guys would like to see any more tutorials if there's any videos you'd like um to see moving forward or any kind of content i'm always up for suggestions uh we're going to be posting you know at least once a week and sometimes multiple times a week um, and please tell me if, if you guys already have your own LUTs, what is your process on creating them? I would love to know if you guys use the curves, if you guys like to just use the primary wheels, um, you know, if you, or if you use a completely different program like Premiere, but either way, I would love to know, let me know, and I will catch you guys next time.